join in singing the processional song, Guide My Feet, Lord, found in the bulletin. Good afternoon. Please be seated. Good afternoon, students, staff, and faculty, friends from far and wide. Welcome to the 2023 celebration service for graduates. Having reached this point as a community, it reminds us that we do not travel this journey alone. We do it with those in this space, those we carry in our hearts, and those who have created a path for us to be here. We give all of you and all of them a thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please join in singing the opening hymn, God, you call us to be prophets.
join me for the call to worship. Sacred Creator, as we come to the close of our theological degrees, we invoke your spirit of celebration. Remind us how to celebrate, how to make space to praise the good that we are and the good that we have done. We would not be here without the sustaining support of so many, our friends, families, mentors, teachers, loved ones, and those we have lost. We call into this place all the witnesses that have held us and guided our way. Counseling Spirit, you have accompanied us in these halls through our struggles and triumphs, our questions and reclamations, the humbling moments and those which have made us proud. Inspire our lifelong learning and sustain the passions that have been nurtured in these walls. As we find ourselves bound to one another after these many months and years, we realize just how powerful our movement onward will be. We follow on the path of loving justice, which you have laid before us. according to Matthew 5, verses 1 to 18, and I'll be reading from the Inclusive Bible Translation, and you can find it in your book list. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside, and after he sat down and the disciples had gathered around, Jesus began to teach them. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who are mourning, they will be consoled. Blessed are those who are gentle, they will inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, they will have their fill. Blessed are those who show mercy to others, they will be shown mercy. Blessed are those whose hearts are clean, they will see God. Blessed are those who work for peace, they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their struggle for justice, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You are fortunate when others insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of slander against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is in heaven is great. They persecuted the prophets before you in the very same way. You are the salt of the earth. But what if salt were to lose its flavor? How could you restore it? It would be fit for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. You don't build a city on a hill, then try to hide it, do you? You don't light a lamp, then put it under a bushel basket, do you? No, you set it on a stand where it gives light to all in the house. And in the same way, your light must shine before others, so they may see your good acts and give praise to your Abba God in heaven. Don't think I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. The truth is, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter of the law, not even the smallest part of the letter, will be done away until all is fulfilled. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. Thank you to God. For two months at that time. She had accepted my risky invitation to begin the, advent the adventure of marriage along with another adventure, pursuing a degree in theology. What an adventure it was. I remember very well how I spent that first semester wondering, Jaeli, what are you doing here? <laughs> when did it occur to you to come and to do a master's degree in theology? It was difficult, very difficult. 
Having to process everything in English was a big challenge for me. I remember very well one Tuesday when I was in the Christology course, I had to have to leave the classroom when the break came because I felt a great sense of helplessness that is difficult to me to express. I had many ideas that I wanted to express and share in the classroom, but it was difficult to express them in English. I asked myself many times during that first semester, did I leave my family in Puerto Rico to come here to fail? Did I ask my beloved wife to take the risk and join me in this adventure and not live up to the expectations? I was very afraid that the dream would end in failure. But what I did not know was all the grace that was waiting for me during my stay at BDS. I received grace in many ways. I received grace from my professors and peers listened to me carefully and made every effort to understand what I wanted to share with my limited English. I received grace when professors approached me and let me know that they were in the best disposition to support me and offer me alternatives. I received grace when I was welcomed into the Disciples Divinity House and enjoyed the beautiful company of all the friends that made that place special. I received grace when my admission to BDS coincided with the hiring of Dr. Yara Gonzalez Justiniano, who has become a great friend and mentor to both me and Annette. I received grace when Dr. Rieger agreed to be my advisor and become a true companion at every step of this process. I received grace when Pai Masabiso came up with the brilliant idea of organizing a group to play soccer every week <laughs> to make sure we had a moment of collective joy. I received grace every time Ellie Kelly invited us to do something, like when, we, when she invited us to spend a whole day falling on snow while trying to ski. <laughs> From the Caribbean, are you crazy? <laughs> I received grace when Beth Maxa come up to me and say she could support me at the coffee hour. When Isaac Ackerman shared the bread and wine and we had a time of communion at DDH. I received grace when Clali Padilla, Sara Levy, Francisco Garcia, Jacob Granville, Adrian White and Christopher Hoshkin will stay and talk after class in Spanish. I received grace when Jorjan Hernandez told me that Eastminster Presbyterian Church and Nueva Vida Church needed someone to take over the position he was living. That's how I meet, met my bilingual church and my pastor here in Nashville, Lilia Ramirez and Margaret Grace. But I cannot end without thanking Anne Giovanna Otero Gonzalez, who since 2015, when we started dating, has never stopped Believing in me. Anet, tu amor me sostiene. Contigo a mi lado los miedos desaparecen. Your love sustains me. With you by my side, my fears disappear. Thank you because from you I receive grace on grace every day. Wow. Thank you for accompanying me in this adventure. Adventure, te amo. I know I turned this testimony into expression of gratitude, but that's what comes from my heart today. What comes out of me right now is to give thanks. Gracias, gracias, obrigado, thank you. Thanks to my colleagues, thanks to, my, to the staff, thanks to the entire community. Simplemente gracias.
tell y'all, we came a long way. We have come a long way since August 2020. Zoom screens, 47 of us trying to figure out what are we doing in Nashville? Are we going in person? By golly, we made it in person. We made it here. So please. <laughs> Through it all, we made it. Say Al's Hebrew Bible. Made it. Foundations. Thank you, Dr. Rezai. <laughs> as well as the Floyd Thomases and Trudy Stringer. We made it. New Testament. We made it. Christian theology. We made it. And we would not be the students we are today without the Flora Legios of God. <laughs> We've come a long way as MDiv, MTS, all the things. And I just want to say I cherish every, each and every one of y'all. And my testimony is your testimony. And I just thought, why not give a prophetic blessing to each and every one of you all? So before I forget, I want to just honor the honorary people of our class that are really technically MTS and also maybe graduating next year, Claire. So, <laughs> Claire, we appreciate you. We was waiting till our third year to finally meet you in person. We were glad to see how tall you were and how that came. But, girl, do your thing. Bless the people through your music. I hope that you're able to just, the melodies that you have within inside of you, you're able to bless people. Beth, we love you. We thought you were MDiv till today. <laughs> specifically Mary Magdalene. Continue your research and may it bless the people and beyond. And also Maddie, you know Peabody and back and everything, they're still one part of one of us and so I hope that you're able to save the planet, the world, and everything that you've been ecologically. Y'all are not supposed to be laughing, they're people. <laughs> Isaac Ackerman, I'm praying for you that you do eventually become the director of the Disciples Divinity House. You get ordained, and also you're able to evangelize near the ocean, which we know that you can. Also, Sean Anderson, you may not know it, but you hold the superlative as hottest guy in our class. <laughs> status. Taylor Ballard, I wish nothing but the best for you and Emma as you embark on a new journey going to the Bay Area. And as well, you do great things in incarceral studies. Cash! We love you, Cash. We've seen you on this discovery, and may God bless you and guide you in where you're supposed to go for chaplaincy to save the world and save the secular world at that. And Peyton Chandler, our transfer student, we're glad to have you. When you get baptized, I will be there. And also, when you get ordained in the DCUSA, may it be a blessing because you have carried a long way. Um, in Travis Chavis's absence, he will become a father for the second time today, so we're praying. Yes. So we pray for him as he has a church plant and continues to grow with that. Kimberly Dillard, you have grown so much. You've been through so much, but honestly, your story, you just see the glory in it all. And I just thank you, and I cannot wait till your album comes out. Takiya Elliott, Madam President of SGA, the past year. I also, I send forth blessings to you that you do what you set out to do to help young black girls and girls of color just be able to express who they are and live in a theological environment that is healthy, that is safe, that is fun, and everything that you do for the Children's Defense Fund. And also, uh, how about this class has two PhD candidates starting in the fall, and she is one of them. So yes, Jacob Gabriel, I hope that you are able to pastor a church 
and do all the things that you want to do that when we cook has instilled inside of you, as well as anything else that you would like to do, may God just bless it and you be ordained in that. Also, Danielle Garrett, are you, you brethren, a fellow that has been coined more Christian than all of us? As you and Mari go to Oregon, I pray that you are able to finish the last leg of your ordination and we can all celebrate with you this time next year when you are an ordained brethren in the Unitarian Universalist Church. All right, and then Jordan Thomas Griffin. Uh oh. <laughs> I mean, what a blessing from chapels to just preaching with you in the hallway and singing songs. I wish you nothing but blessings as you go forth to Chicago Theological Seminary to get your PhD in ethics. Yes. And may you bless the world in higher education and also help us still build that bridge in the black church between scholarship and religion. So thank you. All right. And then also, Andrea Faith Hart, St. Andrea, the abolitionist among us. I know that you were going to do great things moving on to Memphis as Chief Development Officer at MLK, didn't he? And I just wish you nothing but the best. You are the nonprofit queen of development and fundraising, and may you continue to do good stuff. And when you get finished there, you, I have already decided you are going to be, you know, the Chief Operating Officer of my ministry. Okay. Move that mic. Thank you. <laughs> All right, perfect. And Kiara Haynes, I hope that you were able to do everything that you wanted to do with global health and the church, that you were able to help food deserts everywhere and do great things through God. And Elizabeth Hagen, I just met her today, and because we were both trying to get in the building because everybody cut us off. Like, you know, you graduate and then you get cut off. But nothing but the best of you. Elizabeth has been here since 2018, and her time has come up, so we just bless her for that. And then also, Eric Johnson. Eric had to go to work, but I'm so proud of Eric because Eric, through this whole process, has been sober. And I can officially say that Eric now has been sober 28 months, so, so that's amazing. You're about to get married, so I'm excited for that for you. And may you be blessed just in everything that God does. Our little June could not be here, but I'm excited for him as he gets ordained in BC USA and continues on chaplaincy. Alvin Kaler, Holly, I'm so excited for you, what you're going to do in the United Methodist Church as well as chaplaincy and everything else. And then I'm also going to group Pi in with you. Pi, I'm so excited your family is here. And I'm just excited to see what you're going to do in your crossroad ministries, and God is just going to bless you tremendously. As well as Ashley Landis, great stuff with incarceral studies. We already know she's got a job with T Palm, so cool stuff. Sarah Levy, girl, I'm praying for you all the way to DC. <laughs> all the way to DC. She's moving next Friday, so we just continue. I know she's like the first one to go. And so, <laughs> but still that even though you're going back home that you still build community find your fit and just do what god needs you to do during your residence of chaplaincy and then also Kayla mitchell as you continue to build the bridge between the black church and the academy you have burnt up i-40 going back and forth from nashville to little rock and you did it and you can finally say you're finished so i'll celebrate with you when you have the largest church in the state of arkansas our lovely, lovely Josephine Parker, soon to be New York Times best-selling author, come 2026. So we pray that for you, that your story just illuminates and is able to change lives and educate in so many ways. So thank you for you. And then also Sean Riley, our activist, our protester, our everything educational that we need. Cheers and kudos to you as you continue the good work. Courtney Sales, congratulations getting married this year, moving on, doing marketing, doing marketing and ministry and everything else. Girl, do your thing. Continue to do your thing. We support you. And Remy, so excited for you, doing great things in South Carolina. Keep up the good work. Yes. Yes, keep up the good work. And then Gemma, you've done it all from Peabody to here. You're finally finished, and we're excited for you. 
Royal Stephen Todd. The preacher amongst us all, we remember you driving in the Zoom screen at Amazon Prime. To God be the glory. You, you were faithful. You were faithful, and God blessed you in so many ways. And now you are about to start your PhD program at Vanderbilt University in the graduate department of religion. Meg Wade, you are the poet of our time. I cannot wait till 50 years from now when everybody is reading your stuff, quoting it, and all the things. You are doing it. I'm excited for you. Keep on with your poetry because it is really blessing the people homiletically. Graham Watson, I know that you are going to change the world somehow through your models of social justice and also business consulting, so I cannot wait to see that flourish. And Brandon L. Woodley. Renaissance man, mime, pastor, preacher, musician. Excited for everything that you are going to do as you set forth to start your PhD program at UT Austin. Yes, so excited for you to start in the fall. I know that you are going to do amazing stuff. When you start your charter school, I would like to be the first donor. You can hold me to it. Yes, and so I'm excited to see how you will flourish and grow through pastoring and also being a professor. And then even for me, Shannon White, I hope I continue. <laughs> able to take it forth and still continue to be a woman in ministry and carry the torch and also just be a blessing to each and every one of you all because this is not the end this is not farewell this is just a we're getting started so y'all be blessed let's go class of 2020.
final, I gave myself one last assignment. Um, and I was to write a poem for this and for y'all and for me. Um, and so I wrote this, thinking about our time together um, and each one of our very different discernment processes, processes of getting here and going through it and going forward. Um, so this is called Litany for why I celebrate this time with you. Because I have infinity for stained glass and yearn to be part of that mosaic. Because when the world of touching ended, we persisted through a screen. Because each day is a portal we've walked through together. Because there's a corner of the library that always smells like tangerines. <laughs> because I wanted to leap into a life that scared me, and every angel is terrifying. Because solitude, because discovery. Because I once asked Josephine to describe God, and she told me it was like finding out the last egg in the carton had a double yolk. <laughs> because above us, at this very moment, there is a vulture in the steeple, the same to protect our hatchlings. <laughs> because somewhere along the way here, I learned love is not a threat. Mm. Because revision. Because repair. Because we will leave this place and not concern ourselves with the green talents of fear, but use the river of our voices to warble the long wings of justice. Because all birds flock, but so few fly together. Because an arch is the gateway to paradise, and we will process through them together into the blue mass of the unknown. Love y'all. My name is Francis Bodhichimagwari. I have had many successes as a chaplain in the United States Army. But Lord knows, I have also had many humbling failures as one in my 14 years. But I have heard that somewhere that the good Lord uses all of it in our involvement, hence my standing here. All of you have heard grace, I've heard fear, I've heard love, I've heard gratitude, I've heard all of the wonderful things that make humanity. In 2016, I heard about mental health integration for chaplain services through my former CPE supervisor. And as many of you know, clinical personal education helps with self-awareness. When I was invited to say something, I thought about what I said to Dr. Keith Miller 
either in 2016 or sometime between 2019 and 2020. And he asked why we wanted to do this program. I simply said to not be afraid. And the fact that I'm standing here this evening, if anybody knows Dr. Mayor, and tell him that that mission was accomplished today. Stand in all 531 plus of me. <laughs> so that in circumstances, I can speak up and stand either in solidarity or advocate not only for someone else, but for myself. So, what has this program done for me? It has widened my horizon. And we all know what that is. At that point, the steaming has opened that aperture. Not for me to do anything earth shattering, but to actually either zoom in, or dial it back, but to not fear. I've had God's grace. I stand when I started this program with a one year old, active duty work, a dual military husband, and then my mother, and all of my communities of support. I heard someone asked me, why do you do what you do? I said, I don't know, but I know that I'm no longer going to be afraid to go speak up when I need to. To walk with someone, to sit with someone, to journey alongside someone. That's what this program because there's more beyond you and I. There's more beyond Francis Iboeli, and that's where I want and I pray that God situates me and to help me make a difference. Hence, I'm standing here. So, this program, this team with my peers, allows me to focus and to do the work that needs to be done this evening going forward. So, I want to thank everyone, Dr. Snow. In December, with all that life throws at you, I really thought that I was not going to be graduating. Thank you for that grace the first speaker spoke about. Professor Thomas, thank you for helping me make sense of all the things that was in my head that I didn't think made sense. Because I wasn't afraid. I was able to articulate something that made sense to my readers. George, thank you. My peers who read my work with me, Nicole, Peter, not all of us are here, but thank you. So, finally, to my husband, Bekizi, thank you for not being afraid to go there with me, knowing all that was on my plate. And thank you for all my wonderful, I call them my valiant warriors, my five sons, for loving me unconditionally. Even when the five-year-old told me to take a five-minute break. <laughs> I was sitting on the floor with papers all over when he went to bed. Saturday morning, I was still on the floor with all the papers. And he said, Mommy, you should take a five-minute break, okay? <laughs> so, thank you. And congratulations to all of you. What I have learned is that God has positioned all of us along this journey. And what I'm learning, because I'm learning to not be afraid, is to look around and see who's standing alone, 
who might be voiceless, not because they do not have a voice, but maybe there's a fear. I have learned to extend the hand and I recognize all those people whom God has positioned in my life to help me get to this moment. And the promise is this, that I will continue. And this program has again broadened my aperture so that I can focus, I can zoom in or out, dial it up or dial it down, but never be afraid. Thank you. A name that was given to me and a name that was forced onto me and the struggle to find a solution for myself when assimilation made it felt, feel very easy to go by Sivali. However, there is such a beautiful and rich history to my name as Siklali. And it was a very tangible example of the struggles and luchas that many Latinas face in the United States. So I wrote to my name, I wrote about my name because it was the most clear indicator of feeling out of place and feeling the sense of in-betweenness. Um, we have this saying, it goes, no soy ni de aquí ni de allá, which translates, I'm not from here nor from there. Speaking to that displacement and loss of belonging, a lot of people like myself feel like they don't identify as a U.S. or Mexican citizen. So my name and experiences were very connected to the saying and the struggle to find where I stand. Similarly, when I say I'm Mexican-American, that hyphen bridges all those experiences of in-betweenness. This awareness that I can jump from one to the other, and at the same time, I best fit in the middle. And holding myself in space for that hyphen of liminality. So while at BDS, I have been able to explore that in-betweenness, that space of liminality and displacement, and I've met others who have shared the same experiences, and I've been very thankful to hear your guys' stories and the similarities we share as we found each other in the rock and the hard place or in the wilderness. We have held on to hope from our daily luchas. And I'm grateful to my cohort and their vulnerability as they've shared their experiences and have expanded my knowledge. I am especially thankful for Latin and seminarians where I was welcomed and giving a sense of belonging. As I look out, I think of Jaeli and Annette. Siempre los voy a poner juntos, porque así es. 
and Dr. Yada and Dr. Ali and Horian who left us, but he really created a pathway for us. Elle who's not present and Maria. And I've been extremely thankful for y'all pushing me to go past the binaries. So we have shared our stories of brokenness and we've reconstructed it into a beautiful foundation of community and solidarity. I can't help but think of black seminarians and our little mixer and as we shared drinks and dances and laughs and <laughs> had a beautiful night. Um, so I'm hopeful and excited to see the good we will do in our communities. Office of Student Life wish to recognize Dean Emily M. Towns on the occasion of her retirement as Dean of Vanderbilt Divinity School, a role in which she has served for 10 faithful years. In this role, Dean Towns, you have been a creative and courageous leader, a generous and challenging mentor, a cartographer of the present, and a guide toward the possible potential future. You have been a teacher and learner with us all. What is beautiful and good in you permeates this place, and like wood, infused over time with incense, will remain. In short, Dean Towns, you are a visionary, and we are incredibly grateful that you gave of yourself and said yes to this call and invitation to join this community as Dean. As an expression of our gratitude, we'd like to offer you a gift. life that is embroidered in womanist purple and then it is embroidered Dean Towns and it is a communion stole. Mm. Think of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe me, I will never forget you. <laughs> i turn the mic over to you, Dean Towns. Mm. Almost 10 years ago, I started formally uh, in the deanship here. And when I began it, I thanked 
Jim had that moment for all he did to pave the way. I will end it by thanking Dean Hutton Boiler for all that he did to make it possible to, to actually stay here 10 years. <laughs> and that is no small thing. As some of you have heard me say before, um, a couple of Saturdays ago, you're not a dean all by yourself. And you don't have anything that resembles a successful deanship all by yourself. It not only takes a village, it takes the community that makes that village. And I have to say, we may be a motley crew, <laughs> but we are a motley crew with one another, morning by morning and day by day. This has been the honor of my life professionally. The only thing that means more to me than being being here is being married to Laurel Schneider. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't tell her I said <laughs> But it is important, I think, to, to, for me to say thank you, which I've said, but I want you to hear the you in thank you. Each and every one of you is precious in God's sight. Graduated class, mm -hmm. <laughs> so much will come from the work you do mm. and the work you don't do, but allow others to do because that's their call. Be good. I'll say more next on Friday. <laughs> be good. Be good to yourselves. Mm. And be good to the creation you will touch. Sure. To my colleagues, have we not had a time? Mm. It has not always been easy. It has not always been of one accord. <laughs> But we learned how to disagree and continue on. And that means we have grown. My wish for all of you, as I now turn to the faculty as a full-time member, that we won't forget all the hard work we put in these last 10 years. And we'll just continue to do it bigger and better. To the families who probably don't know what in the world I'm talking about, <laughs> let me say this. Thank you to you all, family and friends, and even if there's somebody who just stopped in to see what in the world was going on here. A special place is a place of welcome. And that is what we have tried to build here. And that is who has been formed here from your own kinship network. June 30th, 115959. <laughs> I will probably not be awake <laughs> because I believe 10 o'clock is a good hour to go to bed. <laughs> but when I wake in the morning, I know that my first thought is going to be a Vanderbilt Divinity School. Mm. Not the institution, mm. but the people. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
O creator of all that is good and holy, who by your servants of old, you commanded your priests be vested, to serve in your presence through the riches of your grace. Bless and consecrate these garments, that they may be set apart for the celebration of your holy mysteries. May those who are clothed in them serve you with dignity and devotion, and grant those who could not stand publicly today to receive the mantle of your mysteries, the dignity and integrity of personhood. May they all be filled with the gifts of your fire and passion, and hear and bear the fruits of good works, and with justice, grace, and mercy to carry out their calling. We thank you and give you praise, mighty one, because of the power of your love, you give us everything we need to carry out our calling. Gifts of prophecy, ministry, authenticity, generosity, and compassion. Send down your fire and passion upon us now, that we may not confront, conform to your world, but tra transformed by your renewing grace. Make us a subversive people who pound the drum of justice and practice divine disobedience until the day comes when this land is rooted in freedom and is filled with your justice and peace. Sending God, who commissioned prophets of old for a purpose beyond their comprehension, send forth these servants with an imagination shaped for your kingdom. Give them grace to bless those who come against them, to be patient in suffering, to persevere in prayer, and to rejoice in hope. Ready them for a purpose beyond their imagining. Then call them out into the wild to be bold witnesses to all that is good and holy. May these garments continually remind them to do justice, seek mercy, and move humbly alongside you and those they serve. And all those gathered said, Amen. Amen.
God of grace, from whom all things come and to whom all things must return. By your providence and provision, we have gathered here elated that amongst times when it is easy to be overtaken by despair, we have cause to celebrate. In all of our strivings, may we resist becoming so fixated on and overwhelmed by how much further we have left to go. We forget to celebrate just how far we've come. We are comprised of a sacred delegation of different communities, geographical origins, faith practices, and traditions. We represent the strange fruit the noose could not catch and those whose supremacy could not stop. We are the manifestations of the prayers our ancestors long prayed and we are part of God's answer to the contemporary cries of the oppressed. Faced with the existential reality of ubiquitous injustice, may we look to those who have come before us while providing something worth looking to those who are coming behind us. May we be reminded that blowing out someone else's flame does not make ours any brighter. But if we put our flames together, we will shine brighter and truly be the light which cannot be hid. In our time here, we have been afforded friends, colleagues, and mentors, and may this be our reminder that any progress we make can only be sustained together. And all of our caring for one another, may we be also cared for. And all of our pouring out, may we also find spaces to be poured into. God, may we never forget that we are worthy, that we are enough, that we are loved, and that we have sufficient purpose of our own not to need mimic anyone else's. And as we depart from the school of the prophets, between the finitude of yesterday and the vast opportunity of tomorrow, may we remember that an institutional moniker does not truth make. Moreover, the truth value of the authenticity of our prophetic vocation can be conferred in this place, but not confirmed in this place. May we be found to be prophets and continuing to be spiritually agitated by injustice. May we be found to be prophets by calling in those who have been left out. May we be found to be prophets by lifting up the downtrodden. May we be found to be prophets by raising our voices on behalf of those who have been silenced. May we be found to be prophets by our moral integrity, our ethical action, and our spirit-filled loving for one another. And, oh God, may the work of our hands testify to the witness of our hearts. Amen and Asha. Once again, God bless you. 